Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be testing the Panda RC VTX. Now this thing is rated up to 1000 milliwatts, which also means one watt. So I'm very curious to see if it'll stack up or even perform as good as that cheap Eoshin $14 one to see if it'll actually hit anywhere close to a thousand and if it even goes over 500 milliwatts. Today we're going to be testing this guy out. Now he doesn't have all the channels and on the packaging they actually give you this instruction manual which shows to have all the channels on one side and on the other side it just has a couple channels. Um, but this is obviously for something else because we don't have three lights. We have a total of four lights and they only go in this orientation and this is exactly it. So we have just a couple channels here and I'll have this guy linked down below so you can go ahead and see the channels it supports but it doesn't support all the channels so keep that in mind. I'll be testing on 5805, that's the closest I got. Here this thing goes by 50 megahertz increment so we're gonna be testing the 5800 channel. We'll test the 25 milliwatt, 200 milliwatt, 400, 800 and 100 milliwatt on this VTX. Now they do provide you with two cables and they are both silicone so they're really proper. Also they provide you MMCX to a uh, dipolar antenna. It does have MMCX port and one button to change channels. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we would actually connect this. So let's bring in our one of the connectors. It's really nice to give us two connectors here. And like I mentioned, they are silicone. Now the bottom most wire is the voltage in. It takes battery voltage, 7 to 28 volts, which is really nice. Second one up is ground. As you can tell, they are already color coded and correctly color coded. Here we have RX, which means you can change the channels through the uh, smart port here and it does have an audio input on the same wire so you can use audio also 5 volt out and another ground and as well as the video so it doesn't even have a 5 volt regulator for you now what's really nice about this is the whole vtx is a nice fat heat sink like every aspect of it here and they even give you the option to add some sort of a fan if you wanted to they already have pre-drilled holes as you can see here and um, it's all metal except the bottom part yeah, there's a little, yeah, good thing I touched that. So if you touch it here, you'll see that just this is plastic, as you can tell. And we could easily remove that out if we wanted to. And the top is just metal acting as a heatsink. And we also have five LEDs here to give us the status. Now, changing the channel was a bit annoying, but I got it right. So I have everything pretty much set up right now at 25 milliwatts. So we're going to go ahead and test it. Now, if you're wondering what am I using to test, I'm using the Immersion RC RF meter. I'll have a link down below. It seems to be pretty good. I'm still waiting on my more expensive equipment to actually see if this is really calibrated. And I'm just taking their word for it right now. Now, also some people asking me, how am I powering up these VTXs? Well, the way I'm doing it, I don't know if you've seen my previous review of a charger called the HTRC uh, Duo. This thing has a built-in power supply in it, so I'm just using that. As you can tell, I set it at 16.1 volts to 2 amp maximum in case there's some sort of a short circuit. It will not go over 2 amps and create a big problem. And I just put the banana clip to alligator clip as you can see right here. And I'm just going to apply power to the power here and I'm good to go. All right, so right now I'm about to apply power. It should be on 5805 and here we're listening on uh, 58, th well, 5,800 megahertz, and here it's on 5805 megahertz because that's the closest channel that I can get to this uh, uh, meter here because it goes by 50 meter increments. So now I'm going to apply power. Should be at 25 milliwatts, hopefully. There we go. Oh, it jumped to 100. So this is fresh and it's a really cold VTX. I'm making sure of this. So right now it's broadcasting at 25 milliwatts. And the way to change channels here, or also to check what we are looking at here. So we are on 5808 and we have to hold this really super tiny button right there to change the output power and it'll start blinking like this. So currently, yes, we are on 25 milliwatts. Now we're gonna jump to 200 milliwatts, hopefully still flashing, yep. Okay, so 25 milliwatts and now I'm going to change the channel. I mean the output power. Now we're at 200 milliwatts, it's broadcasting 285. And now we're at 400, broadcasting 450. And now we're on 800, broadcasting 566. And now we are on one. Th oh, yeah, we go 1,000. We're going. We're reaching around 700 uh, milliwatts here, which is really nice. Now I'm gonna keep it. I don't have any cooling currently on it. I just want to see how toasty it gets. I'm not gonna leave it like this for very long, but um, it's doing pretty good actually. That's really nice. This is gonna get pretty good range. All right, so that's gonna be good enough here. The heatsink is doing a really good job. I can feel it already. It's warm, it's still not not even that hot, so that's really nice. And we don't see any thermal throttling, so we don't see the milliwatts dropping, which means it's still 
holding itself pretty good and staying pretty cool. 725. It's really nice. And I think that's, that should be enough. Let's just unplug it now. So I'm just going to drop it back down. So 25 milliwatts wasn't very perfect, I would say. It was around in the 70-ish, 60s now. All right, guys. So overall, this VTX performs decent. I mean, that's all I can currently say right now. Uh, it is reaching its upper limits. It's go it's reaching around 700 milliwatts plus the heatsink here, especially if you're going to be running something that high. The heatsink here is definitely a must. And if you add a fan to it, that's even better. Uh, but the lower milliwatts, if you're using this for racing, you would totally want to avoid this currently. It's broadcasting way over 25 milliwatts in the lower range. Around 200 milliwatts is broadcasting close to 300, so around 280. But uh, it does bypass the 600 milliwatts, which is really even 700. So in that perspective, it's pretty good. Um, so I will be using it, actually. I'll set it up on my Dart XL. And uh, see how much range we can get on this guy. It's a really nice package. It looks like a really good uh, VTX here. And, um, well, that's all I can currently say, guys. I'm going to leave a link to it down below. Go ahead and check it out. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And link to everything here will be linked down below if you want to go ahead and check those out. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.